Hello, everybody. Um, so yeah, um, so, uh, today's talk um, is about uh, essentially finding support for your game. There's obviously a lot of information about this sort of stuff out there. Um, and this is probably a, not a very mainstream kind of take on that. What we're looking, oh yes, yeah, sorry. Huh? Oh, uh, we're just going to do a little bit of a cheat in a second. Yeah, I'm a cheater. Yeah. I'm a big, big cheater. <laughs> yeah. can, you, can you all get your cards out, your roll cards? I really need to get a completed quest. <laughs> this, does this count? <laughs> just I need, I need all up, of them. Just your, everybody hold it up. up. <laughs> Winner. <laughs> cool. 25 drinks coming to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess what we're going to be looking at today is um, some of the more kind of circumstantial uh, quirky anomalies that can happen um, and seemingly behind, behind closed doors, behind the veil. Um, and the idea about this uh, talk is that hopefully you come away a little bit more emotionally prepared for if things don't quite go your way because it's a very complex um, beast. All right, so I think we should just get straight into it because we've got a lot to get through. Let's do it. So we play a game. All right, so for this game, you are going to need your mobile device or something that can scan a QR code, like your eyeballs, if that has hyperlinks accessible. So what this game is going to be is we are going to be taking the role of a studio or yourself, if you, you know, a studio could be one person, and you're going to be a game dev pitching games to funding bodies. And what you're going to be doing is scanning your QR code. This is the first one right here. Uh, and we're going to give a little story, and then you're going to try to pitch a game to it, meaning you're going to be able to pick a little option that says, here's the game I'm going to pitch, and then you're going to have a chance to choose an option and how you want to prepare for that pitch, and then you're going to have a chance, maybe, based on information you get from that preparation, to switch your choice. Now, the mechanics for this are very, very simple. So basically, the uh, preparation you do is going to give you a bonus to a single D6 die roll. Right, so you're going to be giving a number, remember that number, and then after you choose to uh, a game to pitch, we're going to reveal what the point value of those games are, and then just add those numbers together. Right? If you do switch, you get a minus one penalty to that, which it says on the screen, so you'll remember that. All right, so you just remember your number, it's going to be somewhere between one and six. Okay, so there are three rounds, and we'll walk you through the first one. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm just interested, can you scan that from up the back? Really? <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay, sweet, cool. Um, all right, so the first one is um, a government-funded broadcasting body, I won't say which one, um, has been allocated a chunk of funds to make a bunch of games. Um, so you and your team have a chance to snatch up some of that pie um, and add some much-needed coin to your game dev coffers. Now, um, the first thing that you'll be dealing with is... Sorry. Um, starting, a starting point for what kind of game that you're going to pitch. Now, don't take this too seriously um, for two reasons. This game is intentionally broken because it is, um, you know, it's an allegory. <laughs> and, it's <laughs> so, a, and it's a messy, complex system. Yeah. Um, and also because our testing regime wasn't the longest phase. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so once you've chosen a game to start with, and, you know, if you can't think of one, just close your eyes and press a button. Uh, should I move on? I think I can move on. Yeah, they've got it on your screen. Yeah, so. sweet as. Okay. All right. So now you've got one choice on one thing to spend more of your time on. Again, don't take it too seriously. Obviously, you're probably going to want to do all of these things in varying amounts. Um, but as a catalyst for the discussion at the end of each round, we're asking you to just pick one. So roll the dice, see what happens. Keep in mind that the one labeled trump card, you've got three scenarios here, but you, keep it honest, should only ever use that once. Yeah. So you can either use it for this round or one of the other two. Am I going too slow? Can I go? Go on. Go on. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so um, some of you would have been would have received some interesting information based on the choice that you chose. Not all of you. Um, for a lot of it, it'll be just standard practice, which is great. Standard practice is great. So good on you. But some of you might have received some inf insider information, which may help you for the next step. Mm -hmm. You have the opportunity now to pivot. That pivot's going to come at a cost. If you decide to change your mind about what kind of game that you're going to make, you can do that now. But you have to take one away from your total score. And in a second, I'm going to roll the die after we reveal what the point bonus is for these games. And if I roll under what your total value is, congratulations, you made the pitch. Okay. So, after you've added up all the scores that you've already had on your screen, this is your extra bonus for the last step. So, if you chose, I'll just do the top and the bottom. So, if you chose a, a low-cost casual runner, unfortunately, for those of you who don't know, some of you will, um, 
you, there is a very specific reason why they are no longer looking for runners in this particular fund, and it's a very bizarre one. Um, if you chose, um, you know what? I think we can just move on to the next 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 screen and do the do the roll. Because yeah, it's really I'll, just I'll, about I'll do the roll right now. Okay, all right. All so right. think of your score. So you've got if your you number rolled. somewhere between one and six. And so your odds of making that successful pitch, if you had a four or under, who made a pitch? Not. Nice. Oops, not not nice. too many of you. Not you have about maybe 20%. <laughs> okay. So, um, so there's a couple of things that happen here. Now, so these, obviously, I have to anonymize all of this, but um, one of the things that you have to remember about uh, some of these funds, especially with government funds, is that we are kind of chasing our tails here. Um, there, are, um, there are a lot of champions um, behind closed doors, but they're, in, they're um, nested in, in, in massive groups of people who um, perhaps aren't so au fait with the way that software development works and where games work. And so the documents that you're reading sometimes um, haven't been read more than three or four times by the people who are actually doing the final selection. And, and this is just the kind of truth of it. It's obviously getting better, but it gets better very, very slow. Um, so sometimes you might find something hidden inside the pages, and some of you would have, which is probably why you did or didn't pivot based on your initial um, answer, um, because of something that you found very, very specific in the, in the documents. Now this is really critical in, in New Zealand, of course, because we're always getting new grants and new organizations. As governments change, they want to pitch money at, at the games industry. And they just write them, but they don't necessarily have them iterated over many, many decades. So the funding language is very much uh, organic. Mm. Yeah. Can I see a show of hands of anyone who finally landed on doing a runner? OK. Wow. Did anyone use their trump card in this one? OK. Did you go with runner at the end up at the back there? No, you didn't. OK. All right. So there is something that is very... Should we tell them about the, the, the trump card now? I think it's probably sure. fine. Yeah, OK. So the trump card's always the same. So you are leveraging your contracts, uh, contacts. And unfortunately, <laughs> that is kind of a cheat because it is often usually... The, you know, it's often the best way to, to get information about a particular grant. In this situation, um, there were um, several other runners that were also applying for the same grant at the same time. And you knew someone who knew that. And because you knew that some of those people were also um, studios that had lots of runs on the board, you decided, hopefully, to pivot away from that, that, that uh, runner game. And that is just a weird anomaly that would not have happened by design. It was just something that kind of happened behind closed doors, and you just managed to find out. Really bizarre little anomaly. Okay, so next one. Very similar. Um, so this is a social uh, impact grant. So we can think sort of education, health, uh, culture, that sort of thing. Um, and once you've scanned it, and the phones are down, I'll move on. Um, so this is an unspecified body. Uh, don't get too hung up on the details. Um, but you can, if you want to, inside your head, imagine that it is like Ministry of Culture and Heritage. If you want to, it's up to you. All right, OK. So same sort of deal. Whole bunch of people going for some money. You're one of those people. So start by making your choice. Now, they are a little bit different this time. Um, so obviously, if you're making an existing project, um, and it might not necessarily be in the remit of the people that you're going for. So if it's uh, about mental health and your game isn't about mental health, you might have to do some retrofitting. So the options that we've given you are, again, catalysts for the, the final solution. And by the way, I would just say untested digital interactive experience. Basically, what I mean by untested is in, um, it's not something that is a, basically a reskin of a very popular type of game mechanic. Something that's relatively un untested in the market. Okay. So, once again, in preparation for your pitching to try and find support, mm -hmm. we're asking you to spend a little bit of extra time on one thing. Again, they're very similar. A little bit of rewording because obviously the context is slightly different. And of course, the trump card is used only once in this game, which represents also that kind of leveraging your contacts is a bit of a social currency sometimes. So you mm. can't always do it. You can't always lean on these people again and again without giving back to the community. Mm. Mm. And this one is a very bizarre one. Okay, so now, again, some of you might have received some information, some interesting information, which I'll talk about in, in the next slide, um, which may make you want to change your mind. So you can choose now, again, at a negative one cost, to pivot or to stay the course and keep going with your existing project. And this round has a special bonus point. That's right. So 
when when you go for a grant, um, uh, a government grant, there are often stages, and I'm just going to call them gates because for some reason to me they feel like gates. Um, and usually what happens is there'll be sort of some really high-level stuff that is done, usually at a corporate level, to make sure that nothing is obscene um, and, you know, kind of like uh, contravenes anything legally. Um, and then you might have something that's a little bit more, um, this is very obvious that it's not of a very high quality before you even get like hardcore judges involved. And then you might get judges involved at kind of like an abstract level where you're sending them forms and all that sort of stuff. And then you might come into a couple of rounds of meetings. So if you can imagine if each one of those as being gates. If you lost the last round, give yourself a plus one because someone in the judging panel recognizes that you do good work but for some reason just can't get a break and so they're going to push you into the next gate. Now I will add something that we didn't simulate in the mechanics that I haven't actually seen this necessarily get someone right to the end but it does at least sometimes get you to a discussion point that you might not have. Uh, Otherwise, yeah. And, and that is a very New Zealand context thing as well. It's the same players, oftentimes they're a bit small, and they, they're all pitching for the same grant, and you see them over and over and over again. Mm. Okay, right. So the final scores for these projects, depending on which ones you chose. Um, <laughs> if you, I've forgotten why. The novel Digital Interactive? No, the, no, the other one, the zero. Oh, the, the Basin Project? Because it's oh, yes. Okay, yes. Okay, so some of you might have found out why already, but if you chose your existing passion project, give yourself a zero, unfortunately, um, and we'll explain why in a second. If you chose a novel dintera Digital Interactive, give yourself a plus two, and I'll tell you why in a second. Okay, shall we roll, roll the, the dice? dice? Remember, if I roll under your score, you win. Three. Whew, pretty picky this time. Or not yeah. so picky. I should say not picky. Three, three. So most people here probably should have made it. So who is successful this time? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Whoo. Nice. Good work. Okay. So, um, so first I'll just start from the top. So a well-placed team member on your team, that's especially one that um, is not necessarily a game de developer that is in some way au fait with the remit of the people who are giving the fund out, can be a really, really strategic thing to do. Um, it's it's not necessarily um, good practice for all types of games, but if you are dealing with um, with uh, with New Zealand government, it can be super useful, especially if they've been on TV. Um, New Zealand is a, is a consumer of mainstream media and public opinion often shapes policy. And so some of you would have found out, depending on your choices, that there has been a lot of heat for the um, classification office and from researchers at universities and stuff like that around gambling and loot boxes in games. And your passion project just happened to have loot boxes as one of its core mechanics. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that it's a total anomaly. I wouldn't ever expect anybody to consume an obscene amount of, uh, of mainstream media when they're doing game dev, but in this situation, it actually might have helped. Yeah, one of the, uh, uh, to add on to this a bit here, mainstream media has, is a norming body, right? Uh, and so Robert, you probably would have experienced this too. Basically anything that fits outside that mainstream box gets criticized and then pulled back. So if you, you, if you think about any game pitch you're doing, you're gonna say, am I pushing any kind of boundary? What are people gonna be talking about in the mainstream media for that? That's where you might find push when you're aiming at government funded grants. Mm. And I just put another note down here that um, many, uh, many uh, government bodies see games as someone else's problem. Um, and so that can be something that's very hard to broach, which is why you need to kind of come in and talk in their language. Try and make sure that you avoid any things that you know that they don't want to deal with. And in this situation, anyone who leveraged their contacts would know that they probably didn't want to hear the word game anywhere in your pitch. So that's a really bizarre one. It may be exactly the same <laughs> in every way, but just don't call it a game. It's bizarre. I know it's bizarre, but it happens. This is a real thing. Okay. All right. Scenario three. Scan away. All right. In this scenario, which I'll take a little bit slower for us. So this one uh, is going to be about Global Tech Corp, who is uh, come down from the heavens and plucked you, you little plucky studio, um, out of the murkiness and said, we're going to give you money. Now pitch to us and don't scare us away. So once you've got that scanned... or just bitly roll the dice three. Go, go, go. All right, let's right. give us a story. So yeah, in this story, it leaves a bit more context. Um, so in this one, you, as your little studio, have released a mobile narrative game that caught the attention of Global Tech Corp. And they've then contacted you and they said, hey, little studio, actually they don't know how big you are. They're gonna say, uh, can you do this again for our new platform a lot? And uh, they say, pitch us, pitch us what you want, how much budget you need, and that kind of a thing. 
congratulations, first of all. So you're gonna need to write a pitch that is both gonna be able to get them what they want within scope, but also doesn't scare them away, and you wanna make sure that you have business, right? Because that's why you're here. So your choices are, of course, to take an existing passion project you already have, work already done, and then just split it up and somehow make it into their project. And you're gonna say, well, I've already got these assets. I'll wow them with a prototype. Or you can say, you know what? We're gonna go the cheap, fast route. We're gonna make all of these games and we're gonna do it in the cheapest, simplest way, uh, a bit simpler than what they saw, but that's okay because they'll understand we're doing a lot of them. Or you can say, let's focus on a few high quality games built on a custom engine that we're gonna make and then we're gonna iterate on that engine later. Mm. 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 Give us a click. It's good tempo. <laughs> All right. right. So the way you spend your time on this one is again a bit different because this scenario is you've already been contacted. You're kind of already a winner. You just need to make sure you don't screw it up. So are you going to do things like play those competing games that are in a similar market and kind of pitch them a similar quality? Are you gonna say, well, okay, let's recruit a team now that's got experience working with this similar types of games? What are you gonna, are you read the technical documentation? Probably a good idea anyway, right? But are you gonna really dive into that platform specificity? Are you gonna say, well, let's look at this, what's this company really about? Let's look at the mainstream media. Are you gonna then go to the game dev channels and be able to say, okay, what are they doing in this space already? Or are you gonna say, you know what, uh, let's get a budget, let's make a prototype uh, for them and then scope on that. Or are you gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna find everything I can out but for my contacts who work with big global tech and see what they say. So what are you gonna do? Press the button. Press the button. So you can stick or you can change. Probably already made that choice. Let's find out what the scores are. All right, so in this case, if you tried to wow them with your passion project, here's your big risk. You showed them something, or they said, wow, we really liked this passion project you made. The quality was super good. And then you've set the bar quite high, and you can't deliver something that's going to be fast and cheap for them in the same quality. So basically, you're going to be, they liked you for a reason, and you're ignoring that reason why they liked you in the first place. So you can't do that. If you say, well, we'll go high quality and then make an engine that iterates, there's a couple of reasons why that's really good. And we'll get to that on the next slide. But let's see if you made it. Five, very picky. Wow. Very so picky. like everybody. <laughs> Who made it through? Oh, yes, less than before. <laughs> Some bad choices. You guys had a five or a six? <laughs> They're probably good choices. They just yeah. happen to be bad this time. Yeah, good, good idea. All right, what's it all mean? Wait, what does it all mean? So first of all, the client probably doesn't know how big your team is, particularly if you had a high quality product that you would put out there on a mobile platform. They don't know whether you're 30 people or two people or one person who doesn't have a team anymore at all. They just know what you've put out. So you need to make sure that you can meet the new, those outputs again and maybe put on that good public face because you want to make seem you're, like you're bigger than you are. There's a natural tendency to do that, so you overpromise. You need to be thinking, okay, how can I sustain versus subside on these projects? Meaning, you're gonna make more money in the long run and you can survive as a game dev if you're making your own engine, for instance, or if you're saying, you know what, this similar kind of story project or this game project, this mobile project, other people are gonna want this. So if I can repackage parts of it and sell to different audiences, I can, um, I can sustain myself as a studio a lot more. And um, the last part there is about uh, isolating those features. So if you make your own engine, perhaps you might be able to iterate on that own engine, own your own IP, own your own engine, and then you can uh, customize it for whatever clients you need. Mm. So it might be a bit better. Yeah, and I just have an extra note to that. Um, it actually can be quite useful if you've got a pretty large project or even a medium-sized project. Um, if you think about even when you're in really early stages of planning development, if you can compartmentalize some of the features of that, maybe not all of them are going into gold or MVP or whatever it is that you want to call it. Maybe they all are, but if you can find ways to compartmentalize the production of those so that when smaller grants come up, you can pitch individual features in order to get grants for just that particular feature. That can be quite a, a nice strategic way to get things done. Um, it does mean that you have to kind of go, well, which is the most appropriate? And it might still require a little bit of shoehorning, but it can be done. It is, it is done. Yeah. And, and one last note on why the uh, engine one is also a good idea in this case was because you showed them a prototype at that game. And you said, right, let's actually build it, right, the MVP, pitch it to them and say, here's actually our known scope now. And then you can iterate on that and actually propose a full budget based on that. So if you'd chosen the prototype one, that was going to be your best choice. Now, in true Lizzie McGee fashion, if you don't know who she is, look her up. Um, she's the one that 
invented mo Monopoly and invented it to be broken on purpose because it was a commentary on capitalism. This is a broken game. Um, and there was always one answer that was better than the rest, and that was to leverage your contract contacts. So the purpose, or the two purposes of this talk was network. Um, <laughs> I know, and it's this. It's a long way to get there. I, I appreciate the irony of the situation. Like, I, I have an immense amount of privilege right now to be, you know, to be able to be up here. Um, and I'm you know, happy to kind of pay that forward. Um, but unfortunately, that is usually one of the best ways to kind of get yourself through one or two of those gates. Um, is to is to network, and the other one, of course, is just to is just to kind of relax, take it on the chin. Ho hopefully, you'll be able to learn some things along the way that will be able to make you change your um, change your pace, you know, or change your your strategy the next time around. But just appreciate that these things are extremely circumstantial, and, and by no means could I imagine that you would strategize for these specific examples. It would almost be a waste of resources to do so. So, if something doesn't quite go your way, just accept that there sometimes may be forces that are Bigger than you know. Yeah. Oh, well, I got a clap from the wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so don't take it personally if your project doesn't make it through. It's yeah. maybe not you at all. It's just the system. I didn't actually plan for that. I got that from Robert. So that was. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. mind-blowing how much goes into a pitch process.